The edible chef is just a wonderful thing and I'm just, you know, privileged to have this situation and blessed to be in this situation. So, say no more. I actually came from sneakers. I had a sneaker boutique here in Charlotte, North Carolina called Kicks and Blaze. So if anyone knows me from there, still follow. I still clean sneakers. I still get releases. You know what I'm saying? I still do a couple of, you know, kind of any kind of like, I don't know. I still do some things with sneakers, so just fool with me, no big deal. So what I'll show you first as far as my sneaker background, I had them on today, so I'm going to show you these, um, the first actually, the first Black History Months that ever came out, they're called, or better known as the BH1s, are right here in my hand, pretty little hand, I um, posted it on my Instagram, and you can follow me, and I'll post all of that later, so. We'll get into the shoe. I don't want to take too long with this, but I used to do sneaker reviews as well. I don't know if I'll still do those, you know, just timing and everything, but nonetheless, um, I had these on today and I just thought I would show you guys, you know, they legit. I need to clean them though, which I will. And my cleaning starts at 10 bucks, you know, come on, can you really beat that? And so, you know, that's that, my sneakers. I love them first. Not too many people have them. They still look good in great condition. And then my uh, hoodie is uh, natural crap. I have another company called Zobo Fashions where that's my creative juices in reference to my fashion and branding side. Um, I'm a quirky person. You can't really figure me out. And that's why I got my channel so that you can see all the things I get into. And yes, I love to multitask. I'm very, you know, energetic. Um, so I stay busy and I love to do different things that uh, drive me or my passions, I should say. So in saying that, Got the clothing line with Zobo Fashions. I got the natural, uh, excuse me, the natural crack with my skincare products and you know total body care from. Oh yeah, look at my edges. You know what I'm saying? Don't be jealous because I know so many guys in there. Uh, so you know, go into that natural crack. That's gonna be in the bio too. Don't worry, I got you. I'll make sure you stay fresh. Okay, I'll make sure you stay fresh. So, in saying so, let's not keep wasting your time. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let's eat. You know, I'm greedy. I'm a chef. I cook. I love to cook. I love to make people happy through food. I love for people to be pleased through food. So, definitely check out Can Infusion. I can create anything in the sense of your dietary needs. Um, so, you know, I will show you a product right quick in reference to Can Infusion. That's part of my mockdown anyway. And um, I know I'm not saying that right, so if you want to put that in the comments and show me how to pronounce I don't mind. I'm not that type of person. And you'll get to know me the more you watch. Hopefully you watch. Hopefully I stick around. You subscribe. And we'll see how things go. So we have here my psh, ginger fusion. And man, when I tell you it has CBD in it, and here's um, the label, you know, to let you know exactly how many milligrams and stuff you're getting. You can't get a better drink before and after a workout. You have some stomach cramps. You have some issues with weight loss. You know, this goes a long way. And one of these drinks and that feeling of that CBD relief lasts from 68 hours. So make sure you check it out. I know I'm going to drink it some right now. Yeah, man. Pop this thing open. Yeah. Bow. Ginger Fusion. It's on the website. So that'll be in a link too. Don't worry. I got you. All right, so, and this what mukbanging is all about. Um, again, somebody's going to tell me how to pronounce it, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. So then, let's get into what I'm eating. What am I going to eat? Well, first and foremost, I want to let you know uh, where I'm eating from. And I have to give a special shout out and a thank you to Cuzzo's. Cuzzo's Cuisine. Bow, bow, bow. I don't know if you can see that or not. They are an extraordinary homegrown restaurant and they have a food truck. I'm into food trucks and you're going to find that out later. And as you watch me more, you know, we can discuss food because I'm a foodie too. All right. So Soul Food Sunday is uh, actually tomorrow. I watched the movie last night on Friday. Today is Saturday. So let me just catch you up. All right. So this is uh, what? Uh, Cuzzo's Cuisines uh, and they have a menu on the back. Buffets are only 15 bucks, but I can say this. The owners, I love them. From the time I went in there, before they knew I did anything in business, they were so polite. The whole staff, I can't even say just the owners, but for the owners to be there, you know, making sure things are good, they're still a young company, and just being so interactive. 
because those sells um, a lot of seafood, like Louisiana cuisines and stuff, I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm going to put their information in the um, bio too and you let you check them out on your own, what you need to do. Um, you can't go wrong with a food truck and a location, you know? So let's get into what I'm eating. I'm also going to make sure you can see it. And uh, like I said, I didn't eat it right away because um, I was so tired last night. I warmed it up or reheated it. And that's the beauty of the fact that it can still look this good. Mm. So this right here is lobster mac and cheese. And guess what this is? Some Cajun shrimp with barbecue. So it's like a Cajun barbecue mix sauce. They put two sauces on me, on it for me because, you know, I'm special. And you'll learn that too, all in this whole, you know, get down with the get down. So I don't know why I put the top back on this because I'm finna tear this up. But who makes lobster mac and cheese? Look at that. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm smashing. If you're not smashing, that's on you. If you're just watching me eat, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? The food's good. Check out Cuzzo. So now I have in this container, and I don't know anyone who does this, so let me know where you live if someone has this red beans and rice shrimp. Ooh la la, ooh la la. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't even know where to start, but then again, I do. So we're gonna get this thing cranking. We didn't talk about me. We know what I'm about to eat. I'm not even covering this back up. What am I doing? I'm, I'm just here to kick it and get relaxed. Look at this stuff on my shirt or whatever. So now it's time to talk about what? The movie, the movie. Have you seen it yet? Have you seen Nobody's Fool? If you haven't seen it, sorry for your loss. You still got time. It just came out last night. Um, I went to see it here in Charlotte at the Cinemark. And um, um, Monroe Road, if you're not familiar with it, here's the ticket. You don't need to be in all my business, but, you know. And then, of course, I went and had me some good food. So I got a couple of trinkets from the show. Oh, I almost forgot something, you know, before I get into the movie. I'm sorry. Let me take this back a step. Um, here I have, guess what? Our new pre-rolls. That we're going to be using with Canon Fusion pre-rolls. They are the lean pre-rolls. I don't know if you've ever seen them or not. Um, I've given rave reviews by several people. So I'm going to start using them. And we're going to open this up. Um, you know, and I'll put this the link on where I got these from. If you're interested in, in getting them other than the storefront. Um, which was Amazon anyway. So no big deal. But check it. Look at that. I'm going to take one out. And it's 20 in here. You know. I'm going to take one out because I be doing stuff like that and messing shit up. But hey, but look, you like that? You like that better? I don't know. We're going to find out though. These look pretty doggone good. Anywho, we do pre-rolls at Canon Fusion. If you didn't know, now you know. Come check this out. Get these in the raw naturals. You know, stay medicated. So back to the movie. Let's talk about who's in it. But before we get to talking about everything, I'm Tiffany Haddish. Some of you Caucasians may recognize me from the Oscars. Check out the trailer for our new movie, Nobody's Fool. If I close this deal, I'll be the first black woman to be a VP in the company. Hi, Mom. Hey, darling. Listen, it's your sister. She's getting out. If you could pick her up, I'd appreciate it. What time? What time, honey? It's jail. You get there when you can, like the song said. Hey, girl, hey! Free ass, free ass! I'm about to go out here and shake this ass. Can we go to the club? Ooh, this is nice! They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. How you get sparkles in the back of an animal? What is this, a care bear? I need a job. Why don't you just work here? Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that is so dope. Uh, where it say sex? What, what you want me to put right there? What you want to put? Plenty. <laughs> I like sexes from my exes. My sister is a bit much. How can I help you? I do what they say. You been standing in line all this time and you don't know what you want. Okay, you could just stand right there and think about it. Who is this? Charlie. Charlie. He is an amazing guy. She met him online a year ago, but she's never even seen him. It seemed too good to be true. If the man looks too good to be true, he is. You're being catfished. So the dude ain't real? No, the dude ain't real. Let me 
could be anybody. We need to go and find this son of a bitch who catfished me. And we gonna tear his ass up. This should be good. Like that. I'm just tricking the child. Is she serious? Girl, I got his address. We gonna do this tonight. We gonna need a saw, some plastic, burner phone. I gotta go to the bathroom. That's good. You need to go ahead and let all the liquids out because you don't want to leave no DNA. You're not helping. Every time you try to kill him, man, you gonna squirt a little pee. I know that for sure. Mama, it's Tanya. Who? It's Tanya. Oh, no, Tanya no here. Mama, I know it's you. This connection is so rickety. Hello? What? Mama, you in the window. I'm sorry, what? We not on no cell phone, Mama. I, I can't hear you, baby. I can't hear, oh, my. Mama! Ah! Whatever, and I took some notes, so excuse me for looking down. But I'm definitely um, gonna give some pointers. Now, let me get my food. I'm sitting here talking about this movie. I ain't eating my food. One second. See, I gotta get used to this. I be trying to be all, you know, nice and all uh, a fucking lady and shit. And y'all just wanna eat with me and, and, you know, share this moment with me. So let me taste some of this. I didn't have some of my drink, which is great. You should have some, uh, you know, lobster mac and cheese. What? What was I waiting for? Oh my gosh. It's always good. It's not my first time having it, so, you know, but it's my first time having this, you know, shrimp with the Cajun and the barbecue on it. So, um, let me have a fat girl moment right quick. Oh, um, and fucking G. Yep. I said it. Oh, and G, this shit's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. Now that I'm chewing in your ear, and you're getting comfortable with who I am, let's talk about, hmm. One second, this is good. I don't want to have you talking my food in my mouth and stuff. It's kind of nasty. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up the cast is in this movie so you can understand the levels too. Why this is funny and why you need to see it. Mind you, Tyler Perry has informed us that, guess what? This is his last Medea movie. Or the Medea movie that's coming out, I take that back. Not this movie, but the next Medea movie. It's his last Medea movie. So if you didn't know that and you're a Medea fan, say goodbye to Medea. But you know what? I don't think that's the truth. I think that um, he's just getting that hype for now. He may wait three years or so, maybe five, six, and come back out with something Medea. Because, you know, that audience is pretty strong. They're not just going to let it die and go away. So, I think that um, Madea will be back another time or two. And, anywho, let's carry on. So, um, of course, one of my headliners, or the headliner of the, of the uh, whole show, one of the headliners of the movie, and I'm a big fan of now, from the first time I saw her perform, or at, is uh, Tiffany Haddish. So, when I'm telling you Tiffany Haddish has levels and you thought Girl Strip was funny, hmm, this is the next level hella funny, okay? So, in saying so, Tiffany Haddish, and I'm going to tell you, like, this is going to be a spoiler alert now. I'm telling you now, so I'm going to get into this movie. I'm going to talk about myself. I'm going to show you some sneakers. I'm going to show you some pre cones You know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you my food. I'm starting to eat. I'm going to let you know I'm going to spoil the shit out of what happens at the end. I'm going to tell you all in between that I remember. And I'm just going to talk about the movie. So if you don't want to hear the details about the movie, the time now. Well, no. I'll try to remind myself to tell you when I get closer to the point to telling you the outcome of the movie. So let's start with this cast because I'm telling you, I was shocked. Because there were some people that I knew was in the movie, but there were some people I knew I did not know at all was in the movie and it was a pleasant surprise and I'm just gonna tell you anyway because um, if I talk about other characters and I don't remember their names I look that up too but one of the main characters 
uh, was Tiffany Haddish. Then you had your Tika Sumter, who is from Tyler Perry's Have and Have Nots, and you know other various things. She's you know Pretty Square Tyler founder, and she's been with Tyler ever since. So recently had a baby. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but uh, Tika's growing in her acting, and we'll get to that later. Then we have um, who else did we have? Whoopi Goldberg. Wow, she is. Uh, what do they call the people who have one of every form of creative art award that you can get? Uh, she has that, and I'll remember and put it in the comments, I mean, in the uh, bio, but at this point, or somebody tell me if, you know, I'm not saying that right, but she has achieved that greatness. And seeing her perform in this movie, which was rated R and hella funny, but it is adult comedy, so please... You parents who like to drop your kids off because you don't really want to take care of them, don't do it. Don't let them go see this movie because it is grown. It's, it's grown folk comedy, and rightfully so. We grown. But kids ain't got to be in everything. When they get old enough, they can see it. But anyway, I'm not nobody else's parents but the ones I have my own, which I have two. Um, so I'm not trying to change, but I am trying to you know, give you a little discretion, make sure you don't be in an awkward situation like, Oh my gosh, mom, they just say that? Because, you know, when Chris Rock be talking about some, he got, his hair is uh, past pussy, you don't want your kids hearing that stuff. He's sitting there, you like, what? Okay, you know what I'm saying? So let's keep it 100. Or, I don't know, maybe you do. Anywho, getting back to the cast and the crew, Whoopi Goldberg did an outstanding job. It was a comedy, and then it had its moments, touching moments. And any way it went, you could feel that Whoopi truly gave it her all. And it just took me back to when she did Celia in the Color Purple. And how legit, passionate at a young age. And she sold me that part. She sold me that she was Celia. I didn't care what else she played after that. When Whoopi played Celia, it was like, honey, you are Celia. I don't care. Okay? Because uh, when she was like, whatever you do to me gonna come back to you I was like oh shit I'm dodging that shit it just might but uh you know anywho I'm gonna get off Whoopi's dick for real and get back to this uh movie so in, in, in the sense of the movie and the cast you have some surprises in there I wasn't even ready for it because I swear I hadn't even heard about these people being in the movie so guess which two People were in the movie that I heard nothing about. And please let me know if you heard that they were going to be in the movie. Because, I mean, I saw a preview when I went to see something else. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see this movie, definitely. So, Michael Blackson was in um, one of the opening scenes. And then you had Chris Rock. And guess what Chris Rock played? He would put me in the mind of um, when he played Poopy. Because in the sense of the fact that he was... Um, Kind of like, not a drug dealer, not a drug addict, but he was just lame as fuck. And he was just like out there like, you know, doing his thing. But I'm going to get to that part so I can catch you up. But let me tell you something. And you know what? The opening scene was in the trailer it's in a positive place so I can be productive. One thing people don't understand about people with mental illness is that <laughs> people think that even if you go get help, you're still going to have your bad days. You just have to know how to cope. And that's the thing about taking your medication. If you're on medication for your mental health issue, because not everybody who's got a mental health. Now, hear me now. Not everybody who has a mental health has to be on medication. You have two things. You either have to be in therapy, learn how to cope, get your coping skills, and be able to live in society. Or... There's a condition that is debilitating your way of life just by your normal way. Your brain is your brain chemistry is made up, so you need medication to balance your brain chemistry. So please understand when you tell somebody with a mental illness who does not take medication or takes medication and does take their medication, you get mad at something, you be like, take your meds. It's fucking offensive. It's downright hurtful. So just remember that. And if you truly want to support somebody with mental illness, learn that illness and learn how to cope with them.
If I close this deal, I'll be the first black woman to be a VP in the company. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You feel me? Okay. So in saying so, <laughs> Tika got on them drawers. You know what I'm saying? Ass up. You know what I'm I'm not mad at you. I kind of knew some shit was going on underneath. I didn't really know what was going on. But up top, up top, I ain't mad at you. If anybody who is, anybody who got something derogatory to say, they're a freaking hater, not a motivator. And that's all I got to say about that. All right? Next topic, we have Tiffany Haddish. The reason why I really love Tiffany Haddish is because she's grown, and not just her growth, but where she came from. And, man, her story is one of true perseverance. It's one of, if you let one of the shit, the shitty things that happened to Tiffany when she was growing up even, you know, make you flex, it's a wrap for you. It's a wrap. You're not doing shit. You're not going nowhere. Because she showed how much she was a rock to even deal with Hollywood and being an actress because we all know, you know, a struggling artist, you don't know if you're going to make it. You don't know they might not like what you're doing or whatever, but she's a comedian with her own style. She's a little quirky. I think she's a bleak. I could be wrong, but I'm still trying to figure her out. I'm still trying to figure out a couple of things about Miss Tiffany Haddish. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But either way it goes, that's a damn good woman on the performance side and just she got her head on tight. You can tell, you know, she's highly educated and she's smart. And she's not going to just let somebody, you know, tell her what and what not. She make moves. <laughs> she get them bags. Yes, she do. So, in saying that, between Tiffany, Tika, and Whoopi, man, uh-uh. You're not going to see a better movie. I'm telling you. And I'm going to say it. I don't care who get mad at me. You can say whatever you want in the comments. This is definitely better than Girls Trip. This should definitely win some awards. You know what I'm saying? Because um, if it doesn't, then I don't know who's voting. I really don't. And uh, I'm saying that because it's like, it's rated R. And I've never seen Tyler kind of do this rated R comedy thing before. And it worked well, you know, because the rated R part was mostly sexual. It was mostly sexual undertones, because, I mean, Tiffany, that motherfucker crazy as hell. This bitch get out of jail. The first time you see Tiffany, she just got out of jail, yo. Here's time for a spoiler alert. I'm going to tell another part of this damn movie. <laughs> she just got out of jail. Tika rolled up to, um, to pick her up. Guess what the hell this fool at? This fool is in the back of a damn truck. On the damn um, prison yard. Fucking a dude she just met in the prison because he came to see his wife. The fuck? <laughs> uh, when I tell you I was dying, and guess who the dude was? Michael Blackson. And that's why I'm like, this man in here? And that whole shit, the African shit. I'm African. I'm from Liberia, West Africa. Now I'm going to stop fucking with us Africans, but this shit was funny though. <laughs> it was funny though. But I mean, it's all love. You know, it's jokes. I don't care about that shit. I know who I am. I know where I came from. And those jokes, they don't bother me. So, in the sense of saying that, you know, um, she getting a call with her sister. Then, wait, I'm going to take you back to that first scene. I'm sorry. So, when Tika's in, in that first scene, and she's um, getting ready for work at her house, and, um, She's texting the dude that she's supposed to be in a relationship with. His name's Charlie. So she's texting Charlie. Her name is Danica or Danica. <laughs> As Tiffany said, that's what your mama named you, Danica. You know your mama named you Danica, but now you Danica. Okay? Which, in the movie, uh, Tika is six figures, you know, got it all together. Smart as hell as work, you know, doing all these big things. She works at a marketing firm. But she can't get a love life together. So, what's happened in the background is that Tika was dating a dude and they were supposed to get married. She went and got married. Uh, the wedding dress. 
And um, this dude come to her, like, smash everything I'm out. And then turn around and get her to marry another chick and invite her to the wedding. Huh. When you talk about levels, and, and for that to be, like, knowledge in the first five to ten minutes of the movie, this girl talking to a dude, just, you know, texting um, and Snapchatting and all that other extra social media shit. And then she got live dudes, but she's so caught up in what she just went through. So she's like, fuck everybody. Have you been there? I've been there. So I'm feeling her on that shit. But at the same time, that long distance shit ain't for me, B. You try shit, don't work, you keep it moving. But anywho, I'm not hating on people who in that shit because that's your life. But if you don't need it, I, I'm the type of person... When I feel like cuddling, I want to be riding down the street and being able to cuddle. I don't want to have to wait a week or two because I got to go see or play, pay for a plane ticket or take a five-hour trip. You know what I'm saying? I just want to roll over and just be like, yeah, boo, let's do this. Nah. <laughs> but yeah, I do. Nah. <laughs> so, anywho, in saying so, Tika's been doing some shit. She's trying to get over it. She's trying to move on. She's in a full-fledged relationship with a motherfucker she ain't never met before. How many of y'all did that shit? Or, or in one right now? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. If you ain't never met somebody and you're already in a relationship, how that work? You know? And it's not about the looks. It's not about the looks. It's about mannerisms. It's about interaction. We all get together. It's about, you know... How this person act when y'all go to a motherfucking restaurant? Is he the nigga you can't go to a restaurant with because he always gonna fuck up the order and then get mad and then be like, I'm not paying, or then be like, y'all gonna have to take all, I'm not, you know, that shit. So, because of that, I take my chances face to face. I take my chances right down the road, you know. I'm not finna be driving eight hours for some bullshit. I'm just not gonna do it. It don't make sense that way. Not to me. But to each his own. Now. So. In the sense of. Where this movie is going. Within the first ten minutes. We know that she's in this relationship. Tiffany gets out of jail. Tiffany tries to go stay with her moms. First of all. Whoopi. Is definitely not who you think Whoopi is in this movie. Like, not the typical Whoopi Rose. And this is why I like the fact that she took this role, she gave Tyler a chance, and it paid off. And I think it's going to pay off tremendously. I think this is going to be a classic. I definitely think this is this is going to definitely make some moves. This is definitely going to break the block. What do they call it? Break, break the box office. Rotten Tomatoes already has it at four and a half stars. You know what I'm saying? And that's just after one night. When I came home last night, it was at three stars. Later on today, and I haven't even put my review in, and I'm giving it five stars. And I, I'm straight up telling you that right now because it's like, what you want to say bad about the movie, you can say good. So, in saying so, the length of the movie was great because not only was it lengthy, and I'm a type of mug Anybody can tell you who the never went to a movie with me that if that movie ain't good within the first 15 to 30, 45 minutes, bruh, I'm gone, okay? Okay? You ain't got to say nothing. You hear me? Nothing. So, in saying so, I stayed up the whole movie. I had my popcorn. I had my beer. I had my slushy. I don't need much. I had my food at home waiting for me, so what's the deal? What's the real deal? You know? So, I'm up in there chilling, watching this movie. Tiffany comes home, go to the mama house. We'll be in there. And she done already, before that time, she had talked to Tika when Tika was at work after she Tika got ready and was finished texting the boo thing before she went in. And she was like, um, your sister getting out. She can't stay with me, but she can say that shit was funny as hell. And that's why I say, like, I can't tell you line for line. You saw the trail on some of this shit. But when I tell you, almost every damn body in that movie was giving some line, some one-liners. <laughs> you won't know what I'm talking about when you go out there and see it. You saw the trailer. 
Oh, this gonna definitely bring some new lingo and some new sayings coming out in this movie. So, now when she had to talk with her mama, her mama let her know <laughs> that she can't come stay with her. Um, Tiffany can't come stay with her because she still, she was on drugs well. She was like, she happy, she clean, she been in jail all this time, but she can't come in there fucking with her. She done did too much. How many parents know about them kids who done did too much and then they draw on the line? They lay to death. They gonna support you. Do what they do. You know, you got the grown kids who still want to put you on that guilt trip. Want to hold you on that line, won't let you go. I'm an empty nester, and I love my piece of space, my farm. I love my kids to death. But don't let your kids have you out here being guilt trip. And let them have their life. Let them figure shit out. Don't be a hover parent. Don't be a motherfucker who everything they do, every time they fall, you want to catch them. Let them fall. And if you don't let them fall fast enough, Trust me, <laughs> they're going to definitely be fucking up some shit. And they're going to keep thinking it's okay unless you let them fall. But in my case, I definitely don't have an easy relationship with my kids, but I try. So Whoopi shows us a mother's love when she done got tired of that bullshit. And she told her, don't live with her sister. So, she could put up in a room. First night, Tika got the wedding dress. Tika never threw away the wedding dress from the old dude. She on the phone talking to her boot thing. Um, Tiffany go try on the goddamn dress. This one we know that Tika ain't got no but old boy. And I gotta stop calling her Tika. Her name Danica in the movie. And I gotta stop calling Tiffany Tiffany. Excuse me. I forgot her name in the movie. I need to look it up. You see what happened? And you see I'm still eating. And how long I've been talking, I'm still eating. That's what greedy folk do. Alright? <laughs> but, anywho, I'm going to speed it up. Because I don't want to take your time too much. I want to get to just the movie. And most of all, I want you to go see the movie. I want you to understand how powerful this is. Like, we had Black Panther come out earlier this year. That was a success. Blockbuster. Boom, boom, boom. Now we got this. Um, and I mean, I'm definitely not comparing them side by side, but what I am comparing is the fact that we need to support our people, we need to support our communities, and we need to have some black excellence out here. I don't care if it's Tyler Perry being goofy and funny and all, um, rated R, or it's some serious topics and some, you know, fly brothers and sisters in a blockbuster hit um, from comic strip. You know, we need to support each other no matter what we do. So, I'm saying so. Tyler definitely took time with this. You know, you would think, okay, he's going to try to make it like another girl's trip. It really wasn't like another girl's trip. I would say the only thing really about the movie that was similar to girl's trip is that Tiffany was that, you know, rah, 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 ready to take it to your ass, you know, which rightfully so in this movie was the reason why. So I wanted to talk about the scene where she had on the wedding dress because this show how much um, t uh, Tika has not been helped um, in healing in the right process of grieving the loss of the relationship she had with this dude. When I tell you, y'all, Tika scared me when she went into her, uh, what you call it, the exorcist mode. I was like, the fuck? When I tell you, uh, what's her name? Tiffany went in on her ass when she tried to pull up on her. That shit was so funny. About that. Oh my god, that was so funny, yo. But it showed that they have history and they understand and respect each other's, you know, crazy. So when um the shit happened with the wedding dress, that's when it came out that Tika was in a relationship with this dude and she hadn't seen the dude and the dude thought that because Tika had said take off my wedding dress you know what I'm saying like take off my wedding dress I didn't get that for you that was from um so when she kind of said that I can't remember her exact words but when she said take off my wedding dress it was as if 
um, she was trying to say that she was already had a wedding dress to be married to the, her new boyfriend who she had met the, the uh, Charlie dude. It's that good, yo. It's that good. Sometimes I don't even be, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to do nothing to drink them, but shit. I have to sell these things, though. <laughs> nah. But anywho, yeah, so, you know, the thing about that, she hadn't healed, and I'm talking about this for the mental health portion of it. She hadn't healed. She didn't try to move on. This dude didn't got another relationship. They really didn't talk it through or whatever. And let me tell you, and I'm just giving throwing this out here. You can pick it up, lay it down, whatever. But when you end something, end it. You know what I'm saying? Don't have somebody lingering. Don't have somebody feeling like uh, they don't deserve closure. You know, closure is something to everyone. And when you leave things dangling, then that's when you create other issues with people and situations. So try to have closure with people. And when you want to tell somebody something, you know, vital, don't text it. Be woman or man enough to sit down in front of that person and look them in the eye and tell them that. Because that's what real men and women do. And with um, today's society, because I guess we're on social media so much, we forget about that human side of people. We forget that we need to treat people with love and respect the same way we want, the same way we feel it. And... A lot of times, that's why we're so cold to one another. You know what I'm saying? And this is what's caused like a lot of problems we have today. We gotta stop being so cold to one another. We gotta learn how to tolerate each other because we all fucking crazy, like for real. Especially here in America, with uh, the way things are right now, we got so much going on, and it's coming from the top. Like, what are we gonna do? You know? But I'm not here to talk politics. That's a whole other topic that I ain't even trying to get into right right now, really, and not too much on my form. So. Moving right along, this um, scene showed Tika needed to get some more mental health, um, get some therapy, deal with her grief better. And in the black community, it all and, and this is something too that it, it shows because later on in the, in the movie, Whoopi has a conversation with Tika and, and she tells her, she's like, you never really did address that situation. Like you never talked about it. That shit happened. You went into your apartment, you stayed in there for four days, and you came out like it wasn't shit. And when I tell you I don't move, uh, move folks who move like that, and then you be sitting here like, um, okay, uh, didn't your house just burn, a rocket just go through your big foot, and your dog died on a Thursday, and you calm on a Monday? Bitch, you about to explode. Not on me, though. I'm out. <laughs> Get you some help. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that people don't realize is that this mental health shit is real. You got soldiers coming home who not getting no type of um, mental health unless they say something about it. Walking around here with PTSD. But you got normal people with PTSD. Go through a traumatic experience. The process doesn't go right. You're stuck in it. you just stuck. It is what it is. You got depression, anxiety, mofos running up and shit, blowing shit up. Let me tell you. Once I did my therapy... And learn how to cope with the issues that I had. That's what made way so that I can be calm, do what I need to do, and keep moving. And know how to cope with, with crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't want you to be out here stressing and, and just going through shit and not understanding that there's help out there, man. I'm going to find a couple of numbers and I'm going to put that shit in the damn um, bio, too, in the comments, too. Because uh, mental health is important. You know, I live a holistic life. I'll talk about that more as we go along. And um, living a holistic life is total body. You know, you want your mind right. You want your body right. You know, you want your, everything to just work together. So when saying so, you have to know the energy, you know, and the level. Her mom was talking to her and telling her, like, yo, you, you never really addressed that issue. And now it's still like wavering on you and then you can't even function because what happened is she saw the dude with her with the boy with the girlfriend and then found out that Charlie wasn't who he said he was, you know, initially. So but we learned something different as the movie moves on. But when this happens, it brings her to a point where now the motherfucker I thought was my damn nigga might not even be real, might not even exist. And then this nigga about to marry old oh girl, and I got a wedding dress in my damn closet. Because some of y'all be doing some moving in some trifling ass ways. You don't want to close one door, 
But better yet, you don't want somebody else to, for nobody else to have somebody else. So you put them over here in this lock and key. And then you go and do what you want to do. Coming back, you'll take them out, play with them a little bit. Then you'll put them back. Then you'll come back around. You'll play with them some more. Then you'll go. And then all that shit at the end of the day, bruh. No, you just tear the motherfucking down. If you don't want somebody, leave them the fuck alone. Don't be trying to damn grab and hold on to every little bit of shit that you can get, you can get from them. Because at the same time, you're putting more hatred in, the, in their heart for you. More hurt or whatever the case may be. More separation, more numbness. They don't even want to fuck with you. Like, for real. Then they get numb to you. And then it's going to be a day they just walk away. And you're going to be sitting there looking like boo boo the fool. Wishing that you had gotten your shit together. And started loving and, and caring for this one person. That showed you love unconditionally. So, and that's the thing I like about Tika in this movie. She really plays the part of, I don't give a shit, motherfucker. Fuck you. I know you like me. But, you know, I'm just doing you because I ain't got nothing else going on and all this other shit. So, the first day after the whole wedding thing happened, the next morning, they get up and, um, wait, I'm going to go back. So, when Tika goes to work that morning after she finished talking to a boy or whatever, she goes to this coffee shop every morning. That's where she meets um, a boy that's like the dude that's crushing on her and the dude that really want to be with her but she's so caught up in the motherfucker who ain't here and then the motherfucker that left her you know that she ain't even seeing old dude like this dude on the shop this bitch walked through the door she he be like and I don't mean to call him no bitch this chick walked through the door this woman walked through the door and then he was like come on to the front she comes right up to the front he hands her the coffee and guess what? And I know y'all women like this because I like flowers too. You can always send them to me. I don't mind for whatever occasion you would like. Okay. <laughs> but no, nah, to be real, you know, he would give her a single rose every single day. You feel me? Knowing that this woman wasn't even farting at his ass. Now, he was building something that he didn't even know at the end of the day was one of the reasons that won her over. So I say this to those who sit here dealing with a motherfucker who's trying to play them for stupid. Be patient, but don't be their fool. Be patient, but don't be their fool. Show them your heart, but don't give them no more than you can afford to give them with your heart. You feel me? So, you know, this dude giving her a rose and, and free coffee every fucking day or free whatever she gonna get out the damn spot. She going to work. She talking about this dude like, uh, you know, he's, yeah, I ain't feeling him now, blah, blah, blah. So that first day that Tiffany gets out and they go and she going to work, she was going to take Tiffany to a probation officer, but she was going to stop and get her coffee. So, because the probation officer was supposed to be in the same office that Tika worked in too. They go into the uh, location with a dude on the coffee shop. And um, you know what? I need to... Stop saying dude and this and that and truly look this shit up. I got to talking and forgot about what the fuck I was supposed to be doing, you know? I yeah, know. <laughs> but I'm gonna get that right, right? Let me see y'all. Look this up on this thing called the internet and we'll take it from there. I'm trying to look this shit up. I don't put in here nobody's school. Not nobody's fool, but nobody's glue. That should pop right up, too. All right, so. Let's see. I'm going to see. I'm going to read what this description say here in the movie, uh, about the movie. It say, trying to get back on her feet, wild child Tanya, or Tanya, is Tanya. So, Tiffany Haddish is Tanya in the movie. Looks to her butt up by the book star, Danica, or Tika Sumter. To help her get back on track. As these polar opposites collide with hilarious and sometimes disastrous results, Tanya, uh, Tanya discovers that Danica's picture of perfect life, including her mysterious boyfriend, may not be what it seems. So, I'm going to go to this trailer right quick. No, I ain't going to do the trailer right quick. Because um, y'all didn't already seen that. I need to just, well, I got some of the 
names of characters. Omari Hardwick. That's what I'm trying to say is the dude when I say he owns the coffee shop. The dude that's crushing on uh, Tika is Omari. And that's not his name in the movie. I got to think about it or look it up. But you're going to see the movie. So you're going to get familiar with all the characters. And then we can chop it up in the comments about who is who and what the world's going on with this movie. And why you liked it and why you didn't like it. So, um, in saying so, when um, she goes to the spot with Tiffany that morning to get the coffee, she, Tiffany gets to talking and uh, Omari ends up hiring her on the spot. Come to find out, he also was a convicted felon who, you know, was a, in, a drug abuser and was able to rehab and to be able to open this business or whatever. And as soon as, and the, and the reason why Tika found all of this out was because they also had the AA meetings in the same place. He owned the coffee shop and he actually ran the AA meetings. And she went in early that night after he hired her sister with the felony record, you know, which is, you know, and I have to stop and say this. In this community, first of all, we need to do better about supporting people in our community from housing to job opportunities and all of that shit because it's people out here. And look, y'all, I still got this food over here. I ain't even eating it like that. But it's folk over here. And I'm good for now. I'm going to warm it up later and, and fuck with it. That, um, you know, need a hand up. Not a hand up, but a hand up. And if we always looking out for ourselves and don't know ways to build bridges, but we know ways to knock them down, we're not a community. And you got to be a community to be able to, you know, somebody break in your house, make sure somebody call the cops, somebody take advantage of your child, make sure somebody look out. You know, that type of stuff. And when you don't take the time to get to know the people around you, a lot of times you find yourself in a situation where when you need something, you can't get that help. So don't be that uh, person that nobody helps when, they, when you call for help. Not necessarily the boy called Wolf or the boy who cried Wolf, but that person who's always turning their eye, a blind eye, but then when some shit go down, you want everybody to come out the damn house, out the damn woodwork and shit. You know what I'm talking about? So in saying so, <sighs> Don't, don't be that person. So, getting back to the movie, Tika and Tiffany left that night um, and immediately after the AA meeting and what she heard about old boy and his past, um, that he was a drug addict and all this other stuff. She already really wasn't really feeling him, but she liked the attention. You know how y'all women do. You know. You know, girl, stop. <laughs> but anywho, um, she wasn't feeling him, and she just really turned to be good enough, you know. And if I didn't have to, act, if I don't have what you want, you know what I'm saying? If if you, what I have, you don't want it, and, and what I have to offer, you don't like it, it's okay because somebody out there else will, you know what I'm saying? And it, everything ain't for everybody, right? But at the end of the day, everybody deserves happiness. Everybody deserves to be loved. Everybody deserves to feel it. And when I tell you, with me, if you tell me you love me, I want to feel it. I want to be so messed up in that love. God damn. I'd be like, woo, yes, boo. And I'm going to do the same for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to love you to death. I'm going to make sure you know it. I'm going to see little cute notes. I'm going to be in your, you know, I'm going to be by your side. We're going to do this thing together. You hear me? But everybody not ready for that. And, and some people just, you know, um, aren't healed, so they hurt. And you have to recognize that, too, and be willing to walk away from those uh, type situations so you can make sure you heal your heart and make sure that you don't hurt yourself no more than you need to. So, in all things considered, I am truly about to wrap it up. I am wrapping it up right now. But I want to do one more thing before I leave because I said... I wouldn't talk much about politics, but I wanted to take this moment to do this one last thing. One sec. Last thing, if you're over the age of 18 and you live in America, 
Yeah. You already know what the state of our union, right? You already know how you feel about the state of our union. It's time to do something different. November the 6th. Get out there. Do something different. All right? I don't care how you do it, how you vote. You know, and early voting is done. I've already voted. You know, that's why I'm holding it up. But um, wherever you go, find it out. Check to see, you know, get your important documents together. Get your IDs together, whatever. Read. Take the time to read what they got on each one of those referendums, bonds, whatever, you know, that matters in your municipality. But if you want to be mad about these issues, if you want to be able to talk about these issues, put your voice to work. But if you're not doing that, if you're not going out and voting, don't talk to me. Don't fill my head up and don't hype me up for some letdown because you haven't taken the first step to really put your, your opinion to work, to make your vote count, to let somebody know that you're not going to tolerate whatever it is out there. And that's all I'm going to say about that because... At, the, at this point in time, we all know. We all know where we're at with this thing. So go out and vote. Do something right for America. Do, let's, let's really do make America great again and, and do something different <laughs> and do something better than what we've been doing, all right? So it was real good uh, muck, bong, muck banging it up with you guys. Uh, I hope I did it to your liking. So maybe you can stay tuned for the next time. Uh, I hope you like my shoes, my pre-rolls. You can buy them on my uh, website at catinfusion.com. But most importantly, stay medicated. You know, the chef is in the house. We're going to cook too. We're going to eat too. We're going to keep talking about different topics and getting through them. But today's topic was Nobody's Fool by Tyler Perry. Out in theaters now. Go check it out and support some good folk in a great movie. Don't be trying to go get the black market copy. Pay for that shit, yo. I'm out.